Browsers have default actions that occur when an event is triggered, but there are some cases where you may want to prevent these default actions that browsers execute. In such cases, you can use the prevent default method of the event object, and in this video, I'll be simplifying how this method works. Welcome to my YouTube channel where I simplify the web, I simplify concepts in JavaScript, HTML, CSS, React, and web technologies generally. So if these are videos you'd love to see more of, then please hit the subscribe button. Let's look at some examples of default browser actions so here I have this form element which has a method of get and an action of slash API which is where the form is going to send the name and the email data when we click on the submit input. This is the result on the browser. Now watch, let's say for the name I pass Dillion and then for the email I pass a slash a dot com. If I press submit, this is the default behavior of the browser. It's going to send the name parameter of Dillion and the email parameter of a slash a dot com which is a get request to the slash API part. Because I don't have that URL that handles this data, you can see we have cannot get slash API, but don't worry about this. You have seen the default behavior with form elements. Let me also show you one for anchor tags. So here we have an anchor tag with href of google.com and then the Google text. This is the result here on the browser. What is the default behavior when I click this anchor element? It's going to navigate the browser to the href that I've provided, which is google.com. This is another default behavior. And let me show you one more default behavior and this is a normal input and this is the result here now the default behavior when i press the letter k on my keyboard is that it's going to add the k character to that input if i press r is the same thing w is the same thing q is the same thing a is the same thing these are all default browser behaviors when different events are triggered and like i said at the beginning there are some cases where you may want to prevent these default behaviors for example before a form submits the name and the email data you may want to validate that data first you may want to check if the name probably has like 10 characters or if the email is valid or just some extra things and this is where you can use the prevent default method so for the form i'm going to give it an id of form and then here in my test.js file which i have referenced which is this i can get that form using document.get elements by id and then i pass the form and then on this form i can add an event listener and i'm going to listen to the submit event that is triggered on the form element and i can and handle it by providing a callback function. This callback function is going to receive the event object which contains several information and several methods that can be triggered on that event. So here I can then call events.preventDefault and what this does is that it's going to prevent the default action that would have occurred on the browser. If I go back here to the browser, I refresh, I have my form and then here I can pass Dillion again and here I can pass a slash a dot com. Now watch what happens when I click on submit. You see, I click on submit and nothing is happening. That's because I have prevented the default action. I can come to this JavaScript file and I can say console log. This has been prevented. And if I come back here, open the console and I refresh. If I enter Dillion again, I enter a slash a dot com. If I press submit, you see we have this has been prevented. So right here in this JavaScript, you can validate whatever data you want to validate. And after validating the data, then you can manually make a a get request to the API part. So because you have prevented that, then that means you have to manually make the request yourself. And let me show you how you can also prevent the default behavior that happens with anchor tags. So I'm going to comment this. I'm going to give this anchor tag an ID of anchor. I'm going to come here. I'm going to just comment all of this. So here I'm going to say constant anchor is equals to get element by ID anchor. And here again, I can listen to the click event because I want to prevent prevent the default behavior that would be executed when I click on the anchor tag. And then here again in my callback function, which receives the event object, I can say event.prevent default. And if I come here and I refresh, when I click on Google, you can see it doesn't do anything. So let's say I want to first check that the user is authorized to access google.com. Then right here in this JavaScript, I can check for authorization can do whatever checks I need to do before I then navigate the user manually to google.com and let me show you
show you again for the third example, which is this input here. I'm going to give it an ID of input. Let's say a user wants to enter different characters and you want to ensure that only accepted characters are entered into the input. Here again, I can um, comment all of this. I'll copy this line and then I'm going to say const input, get element by ID input. And then here I can add input, add event listener. Now, what event do I want to listen to? I want to listen to the key down event, which is triggered when a key is pressed. And here again, my callback function, which receives the event object, I can call event.prevent default. So this is going to prevent the character from entering the input. So if I come here and I refresh, now I'm currently in the input. If I press D, you can see nothing happens. Yes, I'm currently pressing, even if you cannot see my keyboard, but I don't know if you can hear the sound. I'm pressing different things, but it's not entering because I have prevented the default behavior. So here I can first check if the character is accepted and if it is not accepted then we call event.prevent default but if it is accepted then i can allow the character to be entered into the input now these are just three examples there are different forms of events that can be triggered on browsers but what you should understand from this video is that this prevent default method of the event object allows you to prevent the default actions that would have been executed on the browser when such events are triggered and this is very useful as you have seen in this example where you may want to stop the default browser action, do your own checks or validations or whatever you need to do, then manually proceed with the action that comes out of that event. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe, and also turn on notifications for more concepts that will be simplifying in JavaScript.